Hi, in this section, we're going to show how you can add conditional form fields uh, dependent on values of, for instance, checkboxes. This can be uh, multiple values that you can set. You can also have complex uh, um, settings, criteria. But in this case, we're going to make it very simple. So we have a uh, requirement to enter a purchase order number. And when the purchase order number is required is when this checkbox is checked. So when I send out for signing and I say, OK, do you want to purchase order number? If I say yes, then of course, it's going to be required to enter the purchase order number. When you don't want the purchase order number, then just uncheck it. And then, of course, this one is going to be uh, disabled and also uh, not required. Let's take a look. First, we have to configure the uh, merge fields. So uh, let's start with that. We have to enable uh, the form fields. So uh, make sure form fields are enabled. Uh, you already saw that this popped up. Um, the field dependency so this is for the conditional form fields uh, if this doesn't pop up make sure to uh, request the license uh, or the uh, uh, allowance that you can use this from our uh, customer success team so this has to be set uh, specifically on your environment okay let's continue so let's add a uh, config type the Type I'm going to choose is transient because I don't want to update any data in Salesforce on this one. So uh, this is the uh, merge field I had. Our data source and data source fields are not required in this case. I'm going to put in my merge field again. Uh, okay. So the control type is uh, checkbox and the value is going to be, let's say, uh, true. Okay. And then I'm going to create a second merge field. Um, for the PO number. So I'm going to copy the uh, PO number here or the merge field over here. And then this is the merge field. Again, I'm going to go for a transient. Uh, if you want to save data in Salesforce, just go for a single one. But in this case, uh, for this demo, I just don't want to save the data in Salesforce. There's no need for that. The merge field is going to be PO again. And in this case, it's going to be a single line input. So that's a uh, um, uh, text box with only one line and the width is uh, 50 and the height is six well let's do the width uh, 80 let's make it a little bit longer so the max length of the po number should be uh, let's say 35 and the minimum length should be four okay cool so we have now our uh, form field set up but we didn't create any dependencies between them so we didn't create any criteria we didn't make them conditional Let's already save the configuration over here. If a certain field, let's say the uh, checkbox, um, is empty, then um, is empty unchecked, then the action for the certain fields on the PO number should be it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be read only, and read only is gonna be true. Then we have another action on the same PO field. We're going to clear it out. We're going to make sure it's empty. So we're going to clear it. And then uh, let's see if we can set another action if that is required. Uh, it's required to false. So we add the action that we're going to make it read only, that we're going to set it to false, and that we're going to clear the field. So that's one configuration that we need. Now we need a second one. What happens if we're gonna actually check the checkbox? That would mean that we're gonna uh, again do a field check on the uh, checkbox and we're gonna say if it's uh, checked. Then we're gonna add three actions and it's gonna be the opposite actions what we just did. So on the PO, we wanna set the um, read only to false. We wanna set the uh, required to true and the other one is not really required so we, uh, we don't need to clear the fields so this is our configuration this one looks now fine so we know what to do when the uh, checkbox is checked and when it's unchecked let's save everything was uh, working everything would be working fine because the validation ran so now let's generate a document to sign okay click the sign button so it will now generate the document send it out for signing that's already done and now um, I'm going to refresh this list and see, okay, I have my new 
uh, uh, my new request here. And just for uh, demo purposes, I'm going to use this one. Don't do this in production, obviously, but it's for demo purposes. And immediately open up the signing page. On the signing page, you immediately see that the uh, field is uh, disabled. That's exactly what we want because what we have set right here is that when the, it's uh, unchecked, then the PO field should be set to read only and it should be cleared and it should be not required. So if I now want to sign my document, that should work perfectly fine. If I check this, it should actually say now, well, uh, let's write uh, that it's enabled. Uh, if I uh, put in some value here, then if I check it, then it's going to be cleared and it's going to be disabled. And if I check it again, then of course it's uh, it's empty. So let me fill in a PO number. So it's at uh, PO1234. That looks fine. And then um, I have to scroll to the end of my document and then going to sign it. So that should be it. If I now sign this document, Then it says all signs. So um, let's go back over here. Then if I would going to check my document, then you see that it says indeed my PO number. It has the checkboxes checked and the signature of my uh, per the person.